Murtaza Jaffaji, Chairman of the Board of the Advocata Institute and CEO of JB Securities. I lead a think tank, Advocata, which is a public policy uh, think tank. And I'm also a capital market uh, professional. So early on in 2020, it was very clear to me that uh, Sri Lanka was facing a solvency crisis and not a liquidity crisis like the policymakers were making it out to be. So we made many public commentaries and analysis, which is all available on YouTube, explaining that uh, Sri Lanka needed to renegotiate its debt. But unfortunately, the policymakers did not see it the way we saw it. And it was only in April 2022 that we had to restructure our debt by calling a cessation. Uh, yesterday's announcement is the culmination of a long process. I know there is a lot of political discourse about the need to renegotiate the DSA. Now, there's an issue of semantics here because you can't renegotiate a DSA, which is a debt sustainability analysis, which is a methodology. You can renegotiate the debt. So very briefly, the debt sustainability analysis tries to forecast certain debt carrying capacity variables. Some of them are based on what is called stock variables like debt to GDP. And some of them are what we call flow variables, such as gross financing needs, which is the amount of uh, debt that has to be rolled over a particular year. So many of these variables don't have a red line, but there is an understanding of what is sustainable. And the IMF basically has done this debt sustainability analysis. Now, the input variables for this analysis comes from another uh, model that they create where they forecast the external sector, the fiscal sector, the real sector, and the monetary sector. And there's an inter interaction between all these sectors. So from those models, out comes the variables for growth, for current account, for interest rates, for inflation. Some of these variables are then fed into the debt sustainability analysis, and then you have a probabilistic outcome which comes in the form of a fan chart showing the various outcomes for a debt. So then they come up with a base case based on the projection of whether your debt is sustainable or not. Now, if it is not sustainable, then it means that you will need to restructure it. So either in the form of extending the maturity of the debt or do a haircut on the principal or adjust the interest rate of that. Now, the creditors who own that debt uh, were broken into three buckets. There are multilateral creditors like the World Bank and ADB whose debt was not restructured because it is considered to be concessionary. Then there are bilateral creditors, which are countries of which China was the largest with about 11 billion. And there are commercial creditors. The international sovereign bonds totaling about 12 and a half billion is part of it. And there is, I believe, 3 billion owed to the China Development Bank, which is considered a uh, commercial debt. Now, yesterday's announcement basically is an in principle agreement with the commercial creditors of the debt restructuring. This technically is not coming out of bankruptcy. The real coming out of bankruptcy is that we are under what you call a selective credit rating. And it will probably take a few more months uh, to complete the whole process after which there will be a rating action on us where we will probably come out a selective default, hopefully for a rating about triple C. Now getting an investable rating is fundamental to our economic future. Now there is no credibility in delaying this process because if you delay it, the interest will accrue at the old rate of interest. So the old rate of interest on our international sovereign bonds is at, at about 65 to 7%. The new rate of interest is at about 3%. So delaying the process is very costly. Now, just because we finalize the process, it doesn't mean that at a future date, you can't default again. Because many countries go on to default but let's hope that Sri Lanka basically does not 
have to do that. Now, the important thing is that coming into 2028, large amount of our restructured debt has to start to be paid out. So to give you an example, uh, under the current scheme for the international submarine bonds, the yearly cash outflows is about $700 billion. But from 2028 onwards, it will go up to $1 billion and then $1.2 billion a few years thereafter. So it is very important that our debt carrying capacity is increased before 2028 so that we regain access to the international markets. Because a country never really pays down its debt. It borrows again to refinance, just like a company. It's all about refinancing the debt. So the most important criteria is that we have to increase economic growth. And that will require productivity enhancing investment to come in. Now, I have been a capital market analyst and I have also been a member of the SOE restructuring unit and I have been also involved in many other forums. And I can tell you, I have had a ringside view of the difficulty of getting investment into Sri Lanka. So let us take portfolio investment. Ever since 2020, most investors have been selling out of Sri Lanka and there is really no major flows from the blue ribbon firms coming into Sri Lanka. Our current status of selective default is a big deterrent for major money to come in. Second, as a member of the SOE restructuring unit, we tackled uh, uh, the divesture of 708 companies. Many of these were advertised globally, but unfortunately the response was very poor. So for example, for a hotel transaction, you need bank financing. And therefore, with a selective default status, many international banks will not lend into Sri Lanka. So that is holding back investment. But it also affects Sri Lankan firms. So if you are a firm that is doing construction, say you're doing large construction, example, ships, etc., you have to give a performance guarantee. And the performance guarantee is not going to be accepted by a Sri Lankan bank because they are in selective, they are part of Sri Lankan sovereign and they are in selective default. So without a performance guarantee, you are not going to get those contracts. Second is some countries don't accept our LCs. You need to have confirmed LCs. So what has been achieved yesterday is a huge uh, game changer in the path to debt sustainability. Uh, we have to move forward because the most important thing is to grow the economy. And if we get our rating back, it will lift a huge cloud that is inhibiting Sri Lanka. And these things are virtuous. So one builds on what other business sentiment will improve. The negativity that is attached to Sri Lanka internationally will reduce. And hopefully we will be able to come out of this crisis stronger.